Hello everybody. My name is Johannes Ernst. I have a special announcement that says here. That's actually not true. It's several special announcements. But before I get there, I want to say I am so happy that Nextcloud exists. Because if it didn't exist, we would have to invent it. And this is why. It seems to me that everybody out there, and I live in Silicon Valley, I should say that. Um, everybody out there seems to want to collect our data and grab it and collect it and hold it and never ever give it back. And if data is indeed valuable going forward, then how come that everybody has the valuable stuff and we don't? So something is wrong here and in order to get that valuable stuff back, we have to put it somewhere. Right? If we don't have technology where we can put that valuable stuff, then all we can do is complain. So what's the technology we have where we can put our valuable data? And if Nextcloud didn't exist, what would we use? There is not so much around. So from my perspective, it is absolutely crucial to make this thing successful. Because otherwise, otherwise we'll never get our data back. <coughs> now in that respect, why isn't everybody running Nextcloud? Well, I went to the forums and I found my answer. Here's some random posts about trying to get Nextcloud to run. And I think you've seen them all, right? It is really difficult. Why is it difficult? Well, you know, how many people know what a tar file is? I would say that 99.9% .9 of all people in the world do not have the skills to get it to run. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can't expect them to run it if nobody has the skills to do that. But even if you get it running, there's a second problem which is upgrades. A whole bunch of people get things running somehow and then it breaks sometime down the road. And I'm happy to say that I have two suggestions on how to solve this. This is my announcements all about. Let me introduce UBoss first. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. UBoss, of course, is the operating system that we've built, a Linux distribution specifically for user-owned servers that run web applications. You may or may not, probably don't remember from uh, last year I had a video talk at this conference. Uh, so you have a Linux system we built uh, to make it easy to have self-hosted applications in places that you control. And we took that and let me introduce a UBoss box next cloud. Here it is. I was planning to do a live demo, but given how complicated things are today, um, you will have to come by later at the table downstairs where I can uh, do you the live demo. If you look at this, it looks very familiar probably to a lot of you. This is an Intel NUC. It's a PC, a mini PC produced by Intel. It's very nicely built. We have taken it, we're putting UBoss on it, and in order to get Nextcloud to run, the only thing you need to do is take one of these little things, I have a picture here, actually, this, which is basically a USB stick. You put it into the box the first time you boot it. And by the time it's booted, Nextcloud is up and running on this machine. <coughs> so I think the people who don't know tar files will be able to take this out of the box, push the button, actually right here, put that stick in there, and get it up and running. Let me tell you quickly about the hardware spec. So this is something that we um, put together and it's available now. It has a low power Celeron processor, uh, quad core processor, it has four gig of RAM, it has a terabyte disk, uh, it comes with the UBUS staff, um, which I talk about in a second why it's called a staff. It has the operating system pre-installed and Nextcloud and the select, a se a selection of apps pre-installs upon the first boot. Here's the, the things we pre-install. If you tell me that I should pre-install other things, let me know what that is. When, let me first actually talk about the, um, why we call the staff. If you ever watched a shepherd and their flock, then they control their flock in a particular way. They have a little thing that's called the shepherd's crook in English or, the, or a staff, which is a stick by which they grab out and you know, grab their, their sheep. So that's the equivalent. This is the shepherd's staff, the UBOSS staff by which you grab out and control your devices. Now, why would you want to control your devices? Well, it turns out that these kinds of computers are servers, right? They are not desktops. If you put desktop, uh, Nextcloud on something, you consider it to be a server. 
So you're going to put this into the closet or into your basement or somewhere, but you're not going to put it on your desktop. So a keyboard and a monitor are going to be pretty far away. If you're going to want to do anything with it, lugging that, that monitor into the basement is just not going to happen. So we invented this thing called the UBA staff, which lets you do a lot of administration activities by doing nothing else than inserting it here, oops, doing boot, and then taking it out and putting it into your laptop or your other PC. Here's a screenshot of what, what one page looks like. Because it booted when the, when the uh, staff was in the device, it writes down, oh, there was a device that was called the UBOS box, and there's an app installed here at a certain URL. When you click on it, it sends you right to Nextcloud on that box. So you don't have to know what your IP address is because it wrote it down. You don't have to rely on MDNS, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Um, it's just right there. And if you would like to know how to log in, here you are the front plane page, how do you log into your new Nextcloud instance? Well, it automatically generated a instance-specific admin password. And you know, when you click on here, uh, it shows you what that is, and so you can log in. So the staff is very interesting in terms of making your life easier. You don't have to hunt around with your router and trying to figure out what the IP address is. It makes it more secure because we can have instance-specific um, passwords and other credentials. And um, it is something that's fairly easy to use. Now, I talked about two problems. How do we get people to get this thing installed and running, which is what I just talked about. There's a second problem, how do we keep it running? And here's the second announcement. We are operating a system we call UBOS Live, which is a systems management service. You may or may not want to subscribe to that, but if you do, we basically outsource, you basically outsource system administration to us. So what do we do? Well, we do things such as upgrading and patching the operating system on your UBOS box. We are upgrading Nextcloud and whatever apps you have. And we do hardware monitoring so that if your you know, hard drive is about to fail, we can tell you before you know. And as a consumer, you can understand what this is. You basically outsource this to somebody else. Now, obviously, if you do that, then you have to trust us because we do have access to your device with a special purpose VPN we run for that purpose. Now, if you don't trust us, you shouldn't you know, subscribe to that. On the other hand, you probably shouldn't buy one of those boxes either because if you were out to screw you, we can do this in lots of different ways. <laughs> <clears throat> but I think this is an uh, interesting uh, service for um, two kinds of people. Number one, the about 99.9% .9 of all people who don't know how to administer a server. So that opens up a much broader market for Nextcloud. And number two, for those people who do know how to do it, but really don't want to do it. And my use case is this. If your significant other says, hey, I can't get at that file, and you respond, uh, I have to do some server maintenance first. Then I don't think that is going to work too well. So if you actually have some actual data that actually needs to be available when you want it, you don't want to be in tinker mode, you want to be in production mode. And even if you know how to administer things for a bunch of people, this might be a useful thing to do. Now, how do we price this? And this is a little complicated because I don't think anybody really has done something like you was live before. Uh, hardware is a little easier to price. But, so we looked at prices out there, and here's some example prices for what people charge for stuff. It starts at $35 for the Raspberry Pi, where you can almost run the next cloud on. The cheapest laptop from Apple these days is $999, and it goes up to more than $6,000. Can you believe that? A smartphone costs you, you know, so many hundred dollars, and um, probably to get into the first year, about $1,000 with subscription and all of that. Now the box, a, a next cloud box, um, or a UBUS box next cloud is actually more useful in terms of price because the number of users who use it is more than one. Most people will use have more than one user on the thing. So we're pricing it at $399. Just as I showed it. And if you would like to have the, um, the uh, systems management service UBUS Live, we charge an extra $100 for that per year. Uh, that's the subscription. And we actually think that's a feature rather than a bug, that it is a subscription that you have to pay for extra on an annual basis because it keeps us honest. Right? It's not a fire and forget kind of product where you pay all these things up front and then the vendor walks away. So you don't pay us if you don't actually do what you're supposed to be doing. 
Now you look at this and say, maybe this is a little expensive. Can we do it a little cheaper? And I have another thing for you. Which is this. Almost looks the same. But it is different in the sense that what's in it is a Raspberry Pi. It comes in an enclosure. Let me just pop this up here. An uh, enclosure that's commercially produced by a company called Element 14. Um, which uh, it has a Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus in it, which is the currently fastest Raspberry Pi around. It comes with a 120 uh, gigabyte MSATA disk. And this one comes as a kit. The NUC based model we sell ready to go. This one comes in a bunch of hardware parts you have to uh, put into each other and screw, screw some screw in. I think it's you know, not very hard to do but it saves basically um, on cost. And we sell that from $249. Same thing, if you want the management service, it costs another $100 extra. And then there is those of you who think, what, I want the, last, the, the fastest and the biggest that I could possibly get. So there is going to be a U-Bus Box NextCloud Model B that looks just like this one. It's basically indistinguishable, but what's inside is basically about twice the um, performance of the uh, hardware. That has an Intel i5 processor, 8 gig of RAM, 2, two terabyte disk, and uh, that is from $699. That will be selling in the uh, fourth quarter of this year. Now I haven't said anything about ones that I showed. When will they be selling? And the answer is, you can order them today. They will start uh, shipping in September. If you go to IndieComputing.com, which is the name of my uh, company, you'll find links from where to find out more and um, where, to, where to order. And just because it's a show, we got to do a show special, so the first 20 orders get $100 off. You have to say NextCloudConf2018 as the uh, code during uh, checkout. So now I, let us, uh, I said a lot of things, and I'm going to put it all on one um, picture so you can see one more time what that all was. So we announced three pieces of hardware, the um, U.S. Box Next Cloud on the Raspberry Pi, the Model A on NUC, and then Model B on NUC. The software and the service is identical for all of them. Um, the difference here is really just the, um, the hardware uh, base. And that's all the special announcements that I have. Lots of details, and I can show you how it works if you come down to the table. Some of you have seen it already. Um, any questions? <coughs> yes? Uh, what's your focus? Is it more like private uh, users or enterprise users? So this is, this is intended for consumers and families. Yeah. So the, the user is somebody who has uh, personal information that they might want to share within their family, but not beyond. And um, I take my own family as an example. Uh, between my wife and me, we share a bunch of documents. But what comes to mind is tax preparation documents. <laughs> you know, she has some stuff, I have some stuff, we put it in the same place in, the, uh, in our same next file instance, cool. Same thing, family calendar. Um, I have talked to so many women, particularly, who really hate the idea of putting the family calendar on Google, Google Calendar. Uh, one of the f most fascinating stories for me is that I've heard it on so many occasions that I say, I can stop lying to my calendar because they have like doctor's appointments for their kids and things like that where they don't want to write down exactly what this is all about because I don't want Google to know. Now, if you can put it on your next class instance at home, you suddenly can actually say what it meant because you have it under control. So that's the, the focus. Obviously, you know, other people might want to uh, use it as well, but our focus here is, uh, is uh, consumers. Yes? Can you repeat the question? Okay, so the, the question was, uh, what about accessing the device from, um, from the public internet across a firewall that you might have, I'm rephrasing, right, uh, in your house? So the UBUS Life, as we have it right now, is the bare bones functionality, and if you subscribe to it, you will actually get more over time. Uh, we're just not quite ready yet for doing that one. Currently, in order to access the device of the internet, 
we have an integration with a service called PageKite. Uh, do you know what Page, who, who knows what PageKite is? Uh, not too many people. So PageKite is a piece of open source software and a paid hosted service run uh, by some guys out of Iceland. And it basically sets up a uh, HTTP or HTTPS or even SSH endpoint in the cloud and then tunnels that behind the firewall to your device. Um, and the way they set it up is very cute technically uh, in that they cannot actually see what the data is that goes across, <laughs> even if it's HTTP uh, or HTTPS. Um, and there's integration there. It's not as nice as it should be. Right now you have to SSH into it. I mentioned, I didn't mention that uh, one of the things that the uh, Uber staff does is it generates an SSH key pair um, when you boot with it. So if you'd like to SSH in your box, um, then you can find your key how to do that right on here. So uh, at some point it will be point and click, but not yet. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? Anything else? Sounds good. I think, you know, if you have relatives who complain to you as the technologists that um, the world is awful and ought to spy on them, but they're not technologists, you might want to provide one of those as a Christmas present. <laughs>